Welcome to the last release of the 2022 cycle. We will continue the development of load planning in 2023. I hope you've been satisfied with all the improvements that were made this year from speed enhancements to the auto stack angle tool. I'm going to start with the auto stack tool. In 2022-04, we added in the ability to auto stack angles. As a quick reminder, in 2022-05 release, we did fix the SDS2 EM11 IFC issue of not getting the material types. We added the convert for earlier projects to populate the required SDS2 load planning material type if they were available in the project, and added some better messaging when the material type is not found when auto stack angle was run. Please review the 2022-05 release notes and help. In this release of 2022 we added in the ability to center shorter angles in the stack. This is the default setting for stacked angles. Stacked single angles from previous projects will remain stacked in line. You can restack those earlier bundles if you want to have them centered. For the new herringbone configuration, there's not an option and all the shorter angles will be stacked centered since this is typical practice. We have added the herringbone configuration to the auto stack angles. Two very important points are herringbone, unlike single stack, will only stack angles that are the same thickness, and we will only stack equal leg angles. Let's begin by selecting all the angles in the project. As with single stack, any angles that do not fit the criteria will be excluded from the stacking process. Select the Auto Stack Angle tool, and in the table, select the herringbone configuration. Notice the equal leg angle with the thickness in the size column. Columns will indicate the toe down angles in the bottom row. Max per column will be the number of toe down angles in the stack. I'm going to leave the angle 2 by 2 by a quarter stack with 4 columns and 10 max per columns. Let's see what this looks like in the loading view. Just like with the single stack, once the stack requirements are met, the stack will be set to complete. 4 wide and 10 high. The herringbone configuration reacts the same as the single stack. When you delete using the select and delete, the angles will go back to the staging view and the stack is restacked. You can right click and rename the stack and delete the entire stack by right clicking Delete Bundle. You can also add to the stack as well. I'm going to modify the stack by setting the columns to 6. I will finish this with creating some single stacks. Select the remaining angles and create the single stacks. We had to make some adjustments to the load maps for auto stacked angles to try to make things clearer for the loader. Here's our first stab at this. We will give you an isometric and end view and a table that will represent the stacking order. The table represents the stack. So, the bottom row in the table is the bottom row of angles in the stack. The next row is the toe up angles and so forth. Before moving on, I would like to point out that we will highlight the rows in the staging list as you mouse over the list. This is both in the staging and loading view. Just a little quality of life enhancements. Since we are on these, we have also worked on improving our validation which means that we should be getting less loadables becoming invalid and valid as you move the bundles and the stacks. This, combined with tightening the vertical distance between loadables, will improve your experience with load planning. We're not done with this, but constantly working on improvements.
Moving on to big quality of life features, the ability to ignore clashes, clear clashes, and most importantly, to indicate clashing points. Invalid loadables have all the export capabilities as valid loadables. So, why mark them as ignored? In many cases, you, the loader, may determine that a loadable can be loaded even though the system determined that it is not the case. The problem is that it can be quite alarming to see all that red on the load, and you may have verified a loadable and three days later forgot you looked at it. So we added in the ability to ignore current clashes. Current because this status can switch back to invalid with modifications made to the loadables. A critical point is that only clashes will be ignored. Loadables that exceed the limits of the trailer or bundle or are unsupported will not be ignored. It is felt that these issues still need to be resolved by the loader. Let me demonstrate the tool. You will notice the following. The member that exceeds the trailer limits is still set as invalid. Any invalid loadable will have an alert icon to indicate it is ignored. Ignored loadables will have their color changed to orange when selected, so you can instantly see that the loadable has been set to ignore. Loadables that are valid will not get an ignored status, say for example B48, which was excluded from the ignore. Only the top level status is to be ignored. For example, take the tubes bundle. When I expand the tubes bundle, we see that the invalid loadables still remain invalid. The other two ignored loadables were ignored before I performed this operation. So what if you want to clear all the top level ignored loadables in the load? You right click and select clear all ignored clashes. All the loadables in the load will have the ignore setting removed. Again, notice that the ignored loadables in the tube bundle are still ignored. You'd have to clear them in the bundle. Let's undo. So why does it state ignore current clashes? Because aside from the clear all ignore clashes tool, there are other conditions that will clear clashes. If an action causes the loadable to move back into an invalid status, the ignore will be cleared. For example, if a loadable clashes with an ignored loadable by either a loading or moving operation. I will now move this 1260B4, which we see in the load list as ignored, and move it slightly down. See how it changed from ignored to invalid. Notice the clashing beam on the right is still ignored since it was not affected by the move. And when 1260B4 is no longer clashing, it will become valid. The icon representation will change as the status changes. The final condition that will remove the ignore status is if there is a revision that causes the ignored loadable to become invalid again. This next feature is really going to save you a lot of time when placing your loadables. It is the new clash indication box. Before, you only had the red and valid status, and you had to try to figure out where the clash was. This would be really time consuming and frankly, quite frustrating. Until we come up with some best fit feature, we've added an indication that will box out the points that are clashing. I'll start with this simple condition on this ignored loadable on the top dunnage that is hitting the stiffeners of the beam below. When I select the loadable, regardless of the invalid or ignored status, you'll see a box at the clashing points. I will open a real project to give you a better impression of the usefulness of this clash box. I'm going to finish with the improvements made to our Tecla Power Fab Sync tool. We fixed the issue of losing the login name and password, but 
When you open in the 2022-06 release, you will be required to add both these fields in. We're confident this will be the last time you'll have to do this, fingers crossed. When we view our filters in the project, we can see that there are not any Tecla PowerFab property sets. In Tecla PowerFab, we see the approval status, shipping routes, and lot numbers are set. Back in the load planning project, I will select the sync tool. You can now scroll through the project selection screen. An option to show the log file will appear. This is a running log of all the operations that occur when you sync. Take note that the approval status and lot number are not pulled for the loadables because these aren't logged. That would cause an enormous list, so we excluded that information. Each entry is appended to the end of the log. We can open the log at a later time and even delete the log. But the method to do that is on a need-to-know basis. In filters, we now see that the Tecla Power Fab approval status and lot numbers have been added. In prior releases of 2022-05, these fields and values would not be updated because the shipping route for the loadables was set. This is no longer the case. Back in PowerFab, we see that the 1205B1 is set to an approval status of A and a lot of LT4. I will change this member to have an approval status of IFA, issued for approval, and lot number one. Let's spice things up. I'll add the 1205B1 to the trailer. Now run sync again. Notice that the last project that was selected is remembered. When we look at the log, we see that the 1205B1 was not added. We'll get back to that a little later. When we look at the 1205B1, we see that the approval status and the lot number are updated to IFA and LT1. That's lot 1. Time to address the 1205B1 not being loaded and the trailer not being added in Tecla PowerFab. The Tecla PowerFab load trailer you see here was created in Tecla PowerFab. Load planning does not mess with trailers created by Tecla PowerFab, but will add and update only the trailers that are created in load planning. We suggest you make load planning the source of truth and let it control your trailers. In load tracking, we do not see the load planning trailer we created with the 1205B1 loaded. Since there was only one loadable on the trailer and that loadable could not be added, the trailer was not created. This will hopefully become more clear as we move on. In load planning, I will add the 1275C2 to the trailer and then sync again. Back in Tecla PowerFab load tracking, we see the trailer has now been added, but we're still missing the 1205B1. Why? 
This is because the 1205B1 is set to a shipping route. It is essentially not available to be loaded, at least not to us for now. When I remove the shipping route and sync again in load planning, we see that the 1205B1 is loaded. This will conclude the 2022.06 release video. We look forward to continuing development next year and providing you with more valuable loading tools. Thank you.